Hey, I'm Travis. And I'm Dan, and welcome to Wine and Serious Business. We're on location in Germany for this episode. Couldn't be more excited. Uh, we're here today with uh, Florian Lauer of Weingisch Peter Lauer. Um, thanks so much for taking some time to join us. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, what's important to you with your winery and uh, the vineyards you work with. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for your visits. Yeah. Welcome here in Germany. Welcome in, in the Saar Valley. And Welcome in Ayel. Ayel is um, a wine growing village uh, since the Middle Age. And we, so my family is, is uh, doing wine business here since uh, 1830 approximately. Uh, everything started with my great great grandfather, it was called Matthias Kuhn, and he started with a, with a wine pub or a wine bar uh, exactly in this room uh, and was producing his own uh, own wine outside in the steep slopes around the village. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, um, what is uh, important uh, concerning the history are always the, uh, let's say, our, our ancestor, our, my, 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 my uh, grandfather, for example, who uh, was really a uh, yeah, a, a fantastic winemaker. He um, was the first one here in the Zavale producing dry wine in a in a time when everything was sweet, mm. and uh, and he liked to drink one specific uh, wine out of one specific vineyard every day. And this is the um, yeah the southwest exposed part of our main uh, site, Ida Cook. Uh, um, this is a vineyard, well, uh, it's, it's not, not a, a entire vineyard, it consists of uh, 17, 18 uh, different parcels and uh, all of these 18 parcels, very small, really tiny parcels of only some square meter. Um, uh, we, we harvest a wine which is called uh, Sina. This is our Sina wine because it was the most loved wine of my grandfather. Oh, cool. fantastic. Like to taste it. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So. <laughs> and this does come into Portland uh, with uh, Van Bodem importing. And, exactly. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I've seen, I've seen this around shops in Portland. Should, yeah. So, uh, what, is, what is special about, uh, about our, our, our wine business, perhaps first, is, is we're only growing Riesling. So, we are focused and specialized on this one. Uh, single uh, grape. It's it's the grape which is the the most uh, the best way adapted to our climate, to our um, soil, and to the to the wines that we we like to acquire to to get uh, for sure a white wine, but to get a white wine which is uh, which has a special tension in it, and this tension uh, is is really something. Uh, yeah, do dominated and, and, and characterized by by the soil and and by this uh, this blue gray slate. So, unfortunately, the the, the slate is there. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I've taken photographs. Yeah, so, I yeah. think most of our viewers have, have uh, okay. seen some slates. So, yeah. Okay, okay, it's it's the um, it's the blue gray slate soil. It's, okay. Uh, the the Zavale where we uh, we stay here. The Zavale is uh, ninety eight percent slate soil. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but we have a different, uh, let's say, different types of slate. So we have in uh, here in Isle, we are uh, with our blue gray slate, mm -hmm. which is uh, bringing out uh, a nice mixture of uh, minerality and fruit. In, for example, in Wirtingen, which is also a very famous wine village, uh, the Schwarzhofberg and the Gottesfuß, whatever, uh, we have um, a little bit more red uh, slate soil. And in Saarburg, for example, Saarburger Hausch or Offener Bockstein, we have something like uh, gray slate mixed with uh, the diabas, it's a volcanic uh, oh, really? uh, okay. uh, erup eruption mm -hmm. uh, stone. And, and uh, so, so, for that reason, it makes sense to, to regroup uh, villages within the Saarburg. And uh, we do that by, by this wine here, it's, it's called. Uh, I don't know if, if you can see it. No, we, we show a close up. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they can see. It's it's only uh, it's the the Eider Riesling. So it's we 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 
say, okay, this is a village class Riesling, which represented the village typicity. And um, yeah, this is, this is the, in, in I have the blue grass slate okay. that makes fruit and uh, minerality and yes. wine. I feel that comes through. I get a lot of like lime, lime like citrus, I think, exactly. when I smell it. And maybe like young peaches too, not like yeah. these super fat, ripe, you know, that fall apart in your hand peaches, yeah. but like yeah. younger. Yeah. It's still very first firm. of the season. Yeah. yeah. The peachiness is what sticks out to me initially, uh, with, a, with a bit of some acidity behind it. So the grapefruit, mm -hmm. also. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Good citrus. Sometimes it, 
one week, nothing happens. Sometimes two weeks, nothing happens. Wow, yeah. Uh, usually after two weeks, uh, two and a half weeks, you 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 listen to the to the bird and it it it, it says something. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Okay. That's well, the, the the natural yeast, which is which is uh, developing, yeah, and mm -hmm. which is producing wines or yeah, fermenting wines with a lower alcohol, but with the right uh, initial grape juice. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, let's uh, move on to wine number two then. Uh, he selected uh, a Grosses Cabernet. Did I say that right? Yes. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Um, could you tell us a little more about this specific wine? Yeah, it's uh, it's our, our oldest vineyard. We we cultivate it. The the Schornfels. Schornfels is a, a very steep um, cliff directly on the border of the river, mm -hmm. and uh, you can imagine you have uh, yeah. Something like 50, 60 meters vertical uh, slate wall, uh -huh. rock, yeah. uh, and then the last uh, 30, 40 uh, meters of altitude are planted with Riesling wine. This is wow. so. This cool. is really a cliff. Like on the yeah, on the end of the vineyard, there are uh, there are fences to, sure. to keep you from falling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to fall down on the, in the river or on the street and. Um, this is, uh, let's say, the, the, the secret of, of this vineyard is its uh, topography. The, the topography of the Schoenfels is um, relatively, it's, it's relatively south exposed, south, south, south east. Um, so it's, it's very warm, but uh, the, the top is not grown with forest or not. Oh, really? There is no forest on the top. Sure. Only, only you had all these, these vineyards, you got uh, forest line. Mm -hmm. Like in, uh, in the Cook, for example, we've got a forest yeah. line which is protecting the vineyard from uh, from cold winds, uh, yeah. which are blowing from from yeah from the backside and falling down into the uh, yeah into the grapes or at the point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, this is completely flat in the case of show uh, For that reason, you have a very very cool breeze which is intensely blowing on the top of the. Um, of, the sh of, the, of, the, of this rock, of this mm -hmm. cliff, uh, and so we have two parts uh, of, of the green yard, which are um, on the top, uh, a part with uh, a lot of wind, uh, cool uh, growing conditions, the, the grapes are, are developing a little bit slower, the, um, the aromaticity is a little bit more in direction, um, herbs, uh, oh. the green notes, uh, then you have the, the, the lower part, which is really a very steep falling down in direction of the, of the water. And you have the, the, the great uh, rock wall uh, underneath, uh, which is heating up over the day and, and yeah. bringing all this warm, warm air up into this lower part of the vineyard. Then you have the, the reflection of the water, which is the sunlight is reflected and, yeah. and uh, put back into the... Um, into the vineyard, and so we have two parts: the one with the, the, the upper part with its uh, herbal character and, and herbal mineral, and the lower part with its overripeness, uh, um, very fruit, very uh, yeah, very developed, and mm -hmm. and yeah, the marriage of, of those two parts. Uh, this is the secret of uh, of the show. It's very nice. cool. Enjoy, cool. enjoy it. It's, it's really rich on. Um, uh, something like I don't know, peppery notes, pepper, curry, uh, impression. Um, what is the age of wines? The, the, the wines are, uh, are planted in, in 1912. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's yeah. incredible. <laughs> so jump out of the, yeah. Yeah. the camera. Uh, this is the oh. cellar book of my great grandfather, 1910. He he uh, he had already. Part of the short fence. Uh, this is uh, um, so he, he replanted in 1912. Wow! So, so already before <laughs> before 1912, he had this this vineyard short fence, and, and he replanted in, in 1912. And uh, so it's, it's really a, a, a very very uh, old genetic, uh, which is sometimes uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's sometimes not even 100% clear if it's 
if it's reasoning, or if, if you could, can call that reasoning, because it's, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a uh, form of the leaves. Um, the wines have, yeah, they have a, uh, a ha habitus. You say this? A habitus, like or the, uh, uh, yeah. in the press, you have the impression yeah. that the, the leaves uh, does belong to reasoning. Yeah, fascinating. So, so it's 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 uh, it's in the, in, the, in the books. So the documents all say it's plant with reasoning, and twelve, whatever. Uh, but um, um, as so ungrafted, that was the um, yeah. wow own uh, root. Um, but uh, when I when I go there in the vineyard and uh, counting the the wines, which which look a little bit strange, uh, it's at least twenty percent. So twenty percent seems to be something like uh, Kleinberger, which is uh, mm. a very uh, old um, variety. Uh, which yeah, it's it's a local variety which has been planted in the seventeenth century here in the Mosel Valley. Right. That's amazing. amazing. Yeah. So that's amazing. Very cool. It's interesting that you, you said the like the pepper notes too, because I see that more. I was looking for uh, like more the green herbal character, and I don't I don't see as much of that. No. Um, and I see a, lot, see a lot of good citrus notes similar to the senior too. I think you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Lime, so it's bringing yeah, grapefruit yeah. as well. Yeah, I'm saying again with the peachiness, a little bit of peach, young peach, a little sense of stones or kind of a minerality on the nose. Too. Yeah, this is one that the minerality sort of sticks out on the nose a little bit for sure. Oh, it smells wonderful. So almost a little hint of saltiness too to it. Mm -hmm. in the nose, so. This like that. This is like sea salt, like this float of salt. And we were talking about this before the camera started, but this being the 213. Wow. Said this probably won't be in the States until 2012. Yeah. And this is a wine intended for aging, so exactly. this is very much a preview of yeah. young wine. We're tasting a baby. Yeah. yeah. We'll look right with this. Nice taste, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More to say later. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Okay. The, the, the 2013 uh, are very complex wines, so, so uh, also this one is not dominated by alcohol. Even if that is the, the ripest or one of the ripest vineyards we, we harvested, this is only 12.3 alcohol. Hmm. And this is fantastic for a, a, a gross scale. And uh, I, I like the, um, I would say, uh, the, the density of, of that wine. It's not, not that, that this is. Uh, these 2013 are not uh, a huge monster wines, like, sure. like having a, uh, yeah, a body uh, mm -hmm. like Mike Tyson, but this is uh, more or less a, yeah, a very, uh, very dense core uh, which, which likes to, to develop. Uh, and this is uh, something I, I really like because it, uh, it will develop a little bit like 2012. For uh, 2008, those vintages, vintages which uh, really today are, are for me one of the greatest uh, ripened uh, reasonings we okay. I tasted in, in the last years. So <coughs> it's always it's always a little bit the, the problem uh, if you have very um, a very overripe vintage, which is um, yeah. Very easy to drink young, like well, let's say 2011 is a perfect example. It's, it's a vintage which is directly present. You you enjoy the wine with one or two years aging, perfect. Uh, then uh, you don't don't think about putting that away. Um, so we're going on with the with a fruity style of wine. 